Ai, hello, hello. Mm, just a moment before we begin, actually. Uh, there we go. I'll put some background music over here, so. And also, there we go. Let's pull it quiet. Don't want it to be overwhelming. So, uh, yeah, I think we're ready to get the show on the road. Hello. Um, yeah. All right. Let me know if there's some problems here. I hope it's only streaming the active window. And also excuse me if I'm a bit quiet at times, I'm, I'll be focusing on the actual craft, so ask me anything, or just enjoy the ride. I have more of those edges. I would love to use them. Let's keep them for now. Oh, 
so I think These are the only edges that we have selected. I will give them a bit of a chamfer. Something like this. Yes. That's good. Mm. No, wait. No, no, I don't think we should do that yet, because we need to take into consideration the fact that uh, in a realistic world this door would be opening outside, obviously, like this. So maybe the hinges on, on this side of the door, so uh, what we want to do is... Uh, door and uh, maybe like two centimeters there we go. Should, still shouldn't be Yes, so now they're not intersecting. These these are the small details that often don't make a difference, but they might make a difference later on. So it's you rather do it right the first time than backtrack or make something again from the scratch because you made because you disregarded something earlier. At least in, in like hard surface modeling, it's those little technical details that make a difference in my opinion. They can like uh, really distinguish something between uh, being pretty realistic and being just flat out unrealistic. Uh, okay, so next thing we need to get some hinges on this door I think. I think I'll have the hinges here on the inside, like no way, like that. like uh, no, maybe like this.
playing with millimeters here, so on this part, so it's okay to just go with what it looks visually believable. I need to cap those. First off, we'll weld these vertices together like this, and then we'll cap those holes like this. There we go. Then maybe uh, I'm still trying to think at which point I should be introducing the chamfer. Maybe just not, not just yet. Mm. Or actually, mm, maybe I should give it right now because then we'll have like uh, a little. Mm, what is it like? A, a little door over here inside this door that, that uh, the prison guards can use for giving like food trays and stuff like that. Uh, maybe a little window here where they can, uh, you know, peek in through. And of course, the, the locking mechanism on the inside there will probably only be like. I'm not sure if there's gonna be anything because if we think like if, if you're a prisoner inside a prison cell, there's a door. Why would there be any any handles or anything that would only make it harder for for like in a situation where there's like a riot or something and and and, and the guards try to get into your cell, uh, you you could be holding into the handle and trying to you know make sure they don't get inside. So I don't think there should be anything like a handle. Uh, on the inside of this door. It would, of course, make it look visually more appealing, but... Uh, actually, give me a sec. Mm, I'll check up for some reference. Reference is always good. Because like, okay, this is the exterior, sure, but... I'm trying to see the inside. On the inside. Yeah, obviously there's not gonna be any reference pictures from inside the cell because it's it doesn't look as uh, interesting on the inside it'll probably be without a handle or anything so yeah let's go with that at least for now we can uh, modify it later if it needs to be but i think i'll introduce the chamfer at this point because i believe we're done with the like outer shape of this this door so I won't be doing the chamfer on the outside part of the door because that'll be invisible to the viewer. If not 100% of the time, at least like 99.999999% of the time. So. Uh, Yes, we'll put them on these edges here, I think, yes, but not over here. Yeah, I think that's the right way to go here. Over here and over here, but not on these inside edges. Yeah, no, we'll go here as well, of course. There we go. 
okay. Let's give it a bit of shout. Maybe Maybe actually we'll take these and, and give them a separate uh, chamfer, a more rounded. More rounded. Uh, let's give it a two, two millimeters of rounding over there and uh, a bit more over here, maybe even like one centimeter with like a few different edges. Something like that. Yeah. It'll just look a bit bit more interesting. Then we need to introduce the smoothing groups obviously. Let's let's keep those edges like uh, hard but uh, give something smooth for these inside parts over here because I think it'll look better like that, like this. Yeah, yeah pretty decent. Okay, so then we're gonna put the hinges over there. Actually, I think I'll only, only slice these over here because there's no point doing it on the opposite side as well. There's not gonna be hinges there ever. And I don't think there's gonna be anything, anything else either that that needs to match. And we can always just snap to these existing ones if we need to subdivide those. So. Let's use the inner part of this slice and uh, oh come on, let's move this over here a bit so we can zoom in a bit more. There we go, slide this. go and then um, I think what we want to do is uh, we'll actually move this whole edge loop over here we'll use it why make new ones when we already have something pre-existing so we'll move this and snap it over here but why does it uh, actually Look weird visual. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, never mind. I think it's just. Wonder if this have some kind of smoothing. Yeah, they do for some reason. Let's make it like this. There's no point using smoothing groups on uh, flat surfaces like this. It'll just introduce like weird, weird shading issues. So, ah. I 
think we'll go with uh, Dinner. Yes, we'll go with Dinner. And then actually we have this other uh, edge loop here as well that we can uh, use. annoying that it uh, keeps or because the obviously the uh, edge pivot is in the middle over here and uh, all right the neighbor started drilling uh, wait a second there's still some... Fuck man. Okay. Okay, this snapping will be annoying. Or slightly annoying because there we go I think that's the that's the proper position so now we have some uh, properly aligned subdivisions over here that we can use for the for the frame part of the hinges we are not gonna make anything like ultra realistic hinges over here because we need to keep in mind that it's gonna be for a game not like a real life photography simulation or anything like that so we we need to keep the poly count in uh, you know in order so we'll make uh, something that looks vaguely like a hinge and that's it uh, we're gonna have the over there i think we'll go with something like uh, Go with something like this at first, and we'll actually detach it. Yes. We'll detach those for now, so we can now. Uh, or actually, should we? Maybe we shouldn't. I think we should. Let's detach those for now. It'll be easier to work on them when they're separate from the other mesh. We can uh, reattach it later and weld the vertices, so it'll be a lot more fun. Good morning, booba booba booba. rounded of course but also mm, give it some like interesting interesting details so uh, maybe maybe we'll actually no yes no no yes maybe we'll actually do something like this I have an idea Let's like take these edges and these edges over here. Then we'll. This will be like flat. Oh. Okay. And then. Uh, then we'll have. Uh, Yeah, 
Let's try to make this one look almost like cubicle from top down. Have a vision, bear with me. Something like this. Yeah. Then we'll take these faces over here and we'll extrude them inside by their local normals, obviously. Something like this, maybe. Yeah. Uh, how much, maybe, let's see how much it would be if it was like a centimeter. That's maybe a bit too much, maybe. Because the hinges can't look too like uh, petite. It's a prison cell, so it needs to look sturdy. Let's say seven millimeters. Okay. Then, next up, we can take these and uh, now we can actually give them some rounding because The shape of this mesh is so annoying because it makes everything like like zooming and rotating so hard. Okay, there's the like limit. Okay, good. Now I'm like these goddamn edges over here make my life difficult. Could I remove them without like breaking the object? Such a fucking pain trying to. Let's like go, go like this. No. Ah, we can. It's impossible. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is. Uh, well, anyways. Go like this. There's some weird like fucking shading issues over here right now. Let's go with the uh, shaded look. And now... Hmm. Hmm. You know what? Scrap it. Let's make an actual fucking cylinder. Uh, height segments are one size, maybe 16 radius. Let's say it's like uh, two centimeters, maybe. No, it needs to be more. Let's say it's three centimeters, so. 1.5 Then uh, let's align it So it'll be easier for me to Actually, let's go like this We can set the height properly Also that size looks pretty okay, but I think it needs to be smaller 3 centimeters is too much Maybe 2 centimeters then Yeah Let's try that out, so we'll go with one. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty good. That's, we, can, we can go with that. Mm. 
Then uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we'll set the height properly. And it's, it'll be easy to match. We'll just take these vertices over here and snap them to this. All right. Then we'll actually take we'll actually take these. Uh, we'll do this in uh, another view. We'll take like this. And uh, this, then we'll deselect these and these. Now we'll detach these as separate objects. So when we align this cylinder to the center, it'll actually be. Come on. So now it's centered, and that uh, two centimeter is actually pretty good as a size. And now we can uh, let's make a copy of this cylinder over here, and uh, we'll put it up here with the other one. We'll also snap that as well with the correct position. Now we'll take these, we'll delay, delete them, and uh, now we have this actual hinge looking hinges up here uh, we'll uh, take some uh, we'll take some of their height away because we want to have those uh, parts that uh, the counterparts or whatever you want to call them we want to have them uh, slightly visible as well so we don't want these to actually take the whole space of the notch. So let's do something like this. I hate uh, dealing with objects that are like uh, shallow and uh, not too wide, but very tall. They're, they're you know, moving around them. Uh, Sometimes a nightmare, at least in this software. Mm. Okay, so yeah, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take all these birds and we'll just uh, scale them to like say 90%. Is that too small though? Yes, that's a bit too small. Say. 95, yeah, that'll be good. 95, then we'll take the other hinge. We'll go 95 as so. well. Was it 95? Yeah. And as a good practice, it's always good to remember to. Resistor transform. So okay. Now what we need to do is we need to actually we need to actually uh, got there. See the shape of this object, it's like uh, narrow and uh, shallow, but very, very tall. Extremely annoying to uh, navigate around. 
Okay, so we're gonna do some metal crafting. First of all, we're gonna move. Uh, I think we're gonna move this like just a few millimeters to this direction. This should be enough. I think. We'll just leave a small visual gap. Gap over. God damn it. There we go. Then uh, I think we'll take these four faces over here. Same with this one. There we go. And I'll delete them. We should be having a. Yeah, there's already. Let's see how this. Uh, how this play together if we just straight fucking, you know, bridge them up. Let's check out the twist options. This is probably the best one. That's pretty decent. I mean, we can, uh, we'll add another subdiv over there by just uh, let's bridge these up as well first though. well you know clean them up manually a bit the game the, or the engine does the best uh, approximations it can and leaves the rest up to you so what we're gonna do is uh, we'll go like this and then we'll move those faces from over there yeah we're gonna put this one over here yep and from here this and then we'll take these faces over here all these edges and remove them yep and uh, yeah, now it's symmetrical and then we'll do the same with the other hinge as well yeah there we go and uh, now we need to give it some smoothing groups as well this is using four so I, uh, I'll go with the four over here and just uh, unify these smoothing groups so it's like a seamless flow throughout say four there we go yep. same here as you can see, it's like using two different smoothing groups there with the auto smooth. So we'll clear them and go with number four. I think it's yeah, much better. Yeah. <coughs> uh, well, the prison is for like uh, it's a proof of concept at least, but we might use it for something else as well. But you know, it's. Yeah, proof of concept, first and foremost. Uh, let's check out these uh, end parts over here as well. I think we want to have these as a separate group and this as a separate group as well. Let's say it'll be three. Looks pretty. Damn, my stomach is making noises. <laughs> Haven't eaten any breakfast yet, so I think I need to eat something in a bit. That looks pretty decent. I guess. Or maybe. 
Or maybe this should be four as well. And this should be like, yeah, a separate one. Nah. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it's such a small detail that I think I won't bother it with now. Because in in, in real world, we should probably have this like uh, edge continue all the way up here, so it'll match this, and then we'll have another one go here, another one here, another one here, and you know what I'm talking about to make like the the actual cylinder have have straight edges down where they meet with the rectangular one but uh, i don't think we're gonna do that it's such a small fucking detail embedded here in the crook of this door no one's ever never gonna notice it except now that i've said it but you know you know i'm saying Oh yeah, we need to also give this the same treatment. So number three it was one. Yes, there we go. Okay, next up. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out whether these hinges like uh, lack some visual uh, element to make them more appealing they look a bit like uh, empty at the moment I think we're gonna give some little notches over here up the subdivision count as of course but uh, we can optimize later if needs be this uh, particular scene is going to be pretty isolated so we don't really need to stress too much about the poly count here because i mean modern gpus can draw like hundreds of thousands of uh, triangles simultaneously without any any you know problems so adding a couple more shouldn't make any difference in any sort of scenario of course it's like it's gonna add up if you always keep uh, telling yourself that but we'll save where we need to save and we will go easier where we can go easier so, so yeah let's give it uh, let's give these hinges uh, like this inexplicable unexplainable uh, un, uh, and illogical little notches over here don't ask me what uh, Actually, before we do that, we need to make them tubular. At the moment, they're cylindrical. And uh, if we want the uh, things to show through, the, the counterparts to show, uh, show through, we need to make these tubular. So, And that way we can also pretty much define the radius of the counterparts. I think we'll go with something like that. It looks pretty visually uh, believable. Yes. There we go. And uh, we'll bridge it up. And now. Ah, damn it. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. No, never mind. I'll do something like I forgot I don't have the subdivisions uh, on the inner parts of these tools now because I added them uh, later. But it won't matter because I can add them with the uh, slice plane. 
And I will add them with the slice plane. There we go. So first I will start from the top part over here. Slice. 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 And dice. And then we'll go down here and do the same thing. Okay, better. Now that we have all of those set, we can actually, yeah, we can actually give the notches that I was talking about. Don't ask me what they're for or what they represent. They're just a visual treat. Not everything needs to be explained by logic, especially in game design. Games are all about smoke and mirrors, as you know. So, sometimes things might not make sense, but if they look good, they're, they're, uh, they're excused. Because, yeah, if we, if we start uh, going philosophical, we can also argue that in the uh, real world a lot of stuff looks actually pretty boring, so... So, when we're given the chance to... chance to uh, make things more visually appealing, and visually appealing, of course, we're gonna take it, so... Let's delete these polys over here and we'll do the same down here as well. There we go. Let's call these grease ports. If someone wants to know what these are for, I'm, I'm gonna just call them grease ports. Let's check out this. There we go. There we go. All right, the hinges are already beginning to look like something, something other than just plain cylinders. If this was just any random door, I wouldn't bother with the hinges, but because it's like the, the door in this uh, scene being the actual prison cell door, we, we need to put some work in. And then we'll... Uh, Go with the counterparts, and for those I'll just go with uh, good old cylinders. So nothing special. Um. Hmm. Need to go. Like approximately correctly at first, so we can. No, let's not. Let's let's not scale it at this point. So I think uh, I think what we're gonna do is. Uh,
there should be the center point. So now that uh, if we if we align this object to the center uh, to the pivot point, actually let's not go with the Z. So it should be in the center right now. We can do like this, like crude test over here to see. Yeah, it's centered right now. So we want to leave a little bit of gap over here. I think like a millimeter or two is good, something like that. So it'll receive shadows like it should. Because obviously in, in mechanics parts are never welded together. There's always a gap, even in car engine cylinders uh, and the pistons, there's a small minor, minor, minor gap that is filled with, uh, or that is coated with oil. So when the piston moves against the cylinder or inside the cylinder, there's no force loss, but uh, it doesn't weld in either. So, <sighs> so that's, that'll be our gap. Uh, next what we're gonna do is uh, we'll center this and uh, actually fuck that. For these it doesn't really matter as long as they're like semi-centered. It's gonna be hidden inside the door, so let's not go overboard with the like stuff. Something like this is more than fine. Then we'll just copy it, put it up here. We don't need to play millimeter level with something that's not gonna be visually, uh, something that's gonna be like hidden. There we go. Mm, what? No. Wait. What did I press? Whew. A fucking. There we go. Okay. Nicely embedded over there. Let's give this a different color as well. We don't. We want to keep things as colorful as colorful as possible right now, so we can distinguish different game objects or different like uh, meshes. Sorry. Uh, from each other at this point. It'll look a bit wacky at the moment with uh, with so many different colors, but uh, they represent nothing at the moment. They're just uh, a visual aid for me, so I can, you know, distinguish that this thing over here is a separate object from this one, and this object is a separate from this one, and so on. Actually, we'll give this a different color as well. Let's make it like no, not this one, uh, like uh, this. Everything needs to be different color. As much as possible. All right, put on some coffee. That's a good idea. Uh, fuck. Sorry for me stretching every now and then, but... Uh, I need to stretch a bit, I just woke up not too long ago, so... Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> We spent so much time on such a small detail, but I think small details make a huge difference sometimes. And in this scenario, I think it does make a difference. So next, what we're going to do is uh, we'll actually
Okay, so apparently the music, the background music is a bit too quiet, so we'll pump it up just a bit. I mean, I wanted to keep it semi-quiet so it doesn't, you know, like overwhelm you. But let's put it up a bit louder, so... Yeah, because I won't be talking all the time, so it won't be totally quiet. Oh, that's a bit better. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we will uh, set the pivot of this door to first we'll center it, yes, and then we'll uh, take it down here. The Z position of the pivot doesn't matter at all so let's put it down here and then we'll actually center it with uh, let's see if this one has its pivot centered yes we'll align it with this hinge so check it out we take this pivot, we'll align it with this, the center of this hinge. There we go. Maybe even, maybe even the Z position, why not? There we go. So now that we take this door and we'll rotate it, it should open naturally. There we go. Moving around the hinge. All right, looks pretty good. But, uh, yeah. Mm. It moves around the hinge as it should, but let me think. I know what the problem is here, or oh, the problem, it's not really a problem, but I don't think that's something that needs to be addressed. I have a strong feeling it's not something that needs to be addressed, because I'm not even sure if the door is ever gonna open. So, I mean, and if it is, it's gonna be only once. So, I mean, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks good enough, so we can live with that. Let's say the door can only open uh, 35 degrees, 40, 45, how much? Let's say the door can only open 60 degrees. Is that too little? I think that's good enough. I mean, they open the door, they come in, whatever. Okay, we'll go with that. Now next up we need to put a little peeking hole inside this door so some of the prison guards can look inside. Do we want to use... No, we don't. We want to look, make this look like a mechanical thing. So no shortcuts, right? Also, what happened to my music? It ended. Mm. Let's see if there's anything else we can put on. Uh. I think I haven't listened to these background music tracks, so I hope they're not, not like. obscene or anything. 
Okay. Yeah. Let me know if the music is too loud or too quiet. I can uh, I can adjust it as need arises. centimeters. Is that too much or too little? Nah, it's too little. 15 centi 20 centimeters. That'll be the size of the peaking hole. Okay. I mean it's not a oh never mind it's 20 ah yeah 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 so it's 10 centimeters to each direction. Right. Yeah. It's gotta be because if this door is like almost 90 centimeters wide, 85 to be precise, uh, 20 centimeters seems like, yeah, this is 20 centimeters. I think that looks pretty decent as a height. And then we'll and we'll remove these. Yeah. We'll uh, bridge up. All right. So now there's a hole in the door that doesn't that doesn't mean much yet, but. Uh, want is uh, actually make it wider out here because it'll give the guards a better angle when looking in I think no it won't it needs to be the other way around it doesn't yeah obviously it needs to be bigger on the inside and smaller on the outside so when the prisoner is looking out he can't see shit, but when the guards are looking in, they can see more, maybe. I know it works in both ways, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm just playing around, don't mind me. Testing. Yeah, it's gonna give a better field of view from the inside as well. Yeah, so it works both ways. But I think that's okay. I mean, it doesn't really. This looks good. I'm gonna go with that. Maybe even no, no, only horizontal, not vertical. Oh. <sighs> okay, let's put it up a notch. Yeah. So we 
we need to put or give it a like uh, first of all we need to chamfer these up so they're not so hard that choose like like a metallic uh, frame and a little window and we'll actually use the existing geometry that we have chamfer but we can eliminate that we can uh, you know it's not a problem really uh, let's say it's 2.5 centimeters the frame uh, if that's even enough if that's even enough depends on the curvature of this uh, it should be enough yeah it's gonna be enough. So now we need to do some cleaning up. Now we need to do some proper cleaning up. First, uh, we'll take all of these outer edges. Now first we'll take all of these uh, intersecting polygons and we need to uh, we need to weld these together so we'll approximate the basically we'll no wait actually yeah, well the same thing we'll approximate the uh, center point for the uh, next up what we will do these and we'll do the same thing and the same thing okay there we go and we'll do the same up here and here and here and here there we go then uh, this takes a lot of cleaning but it should be a nice outcome in the end so next up what we're gonna do is we'll uh, zero there yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I was going for. Yep. So I'll do the same over here. Yes. Then uh, what we need to do is uh, we'll zero this as well and we'll snap it with uh, this there we go same here so zero the y and snap it over here and then we'll do it on the outside zero y and snap it with this one And we'll snap it with uh, this one. All right. Uh, now we have some actual straight edges over there. I think we'll look it from the top-down perspective just to make sure. Wait a second. Wait a second. 
Well, I mean, we'll do the final step by going like this. We'll take all of them on this side. Okay. And we'll make planner, planner, and then we'll do it like over here as well. It, we want to separate it, I think, because, no way, one more thing we need to check is that these words are welded for sure, okay, they are, and also there's no, yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether this part of the door should be like made out of separate piece or whether it... Uh, I mean obviously in real life it would be made of a separate piece of metal but then it could have been like welded in there to make it uh, one... Uh, make it into a single piece. But uh, yeah, I think that's how, how they, they made it. They made this into out of big sheets of metal into a solid piece of metal door because it's for a prison it needs to be like all the way all the way around like extremely sturdy and solid with no moving or uh, detaching parts and pieces millimeters of chamfer and then we'll give the window a go. First of all let's center it and say it'll be something like it'll be strong plexiglass at least this thick. Mm. 
there we go. And there we have a window for the gun. Nice. Let's even give it some different color like green. Okay. All right. It's coming together nicely. Slowly but nicely. It's already looking a bit like a like an actual cell. Even though it's all colored up and shit and not textured at all. some quick snack because I'm hungry AF. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. <laughs> God damn, it's pretty dark. Let's put on some light over here. Mm. So yeah, I had to eat some, eat some uh, breakfast in 
reality. It's like 2.30 here p.m. so you could call it a lunch or yeah, a lunch already but anyways, anyways, uh, let's get back to it for a while now. Okay. So we have the we have this uh, uh, little uh, patch or a window or whatever you want to call it over here. But aside from that, we also need to put a like uh, what do you call it? I need to actually check this out. Give me a second. A hatch, yeah. We need to put a hatch over here, uh, down here, so you know, like, uh, because it's it's like a closed cell block. The the prisoners don't get out of their cells uh, every day. Uh, maybe not even every. Well, let's say at least not every day. So uh, basically, there are their foods inside the cells. So we need to have this little hatch down here where the prison guards can. Uh, hand over the uh, food trays and maybe if they get like some important documents or something like that. So <clears throat> let's try to figure this out. Uh, what would be a good height for the hatch? Let's say we're standing up here. There's the door. Needs to be down here. I think like 45 50 centimeters is probably the good height. Let's say 50 centimeters. Yeah. That's where we want our hatch to be. So it's almost almost lines up with the hinges, but we don't or we won't care about that because because uh, yeah, in real world uh, they they wouldn't uh, line up either. So mm. how wide should we have it? How wide should we have it? I think it should be something like... Maybe 45 centimeters. Maybe 40. I think 40 centimeters is pretty good as a width for the, for the thing. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take an easy route. We'll uh, uh, God damn this cube here. Let's make it like transparent. So there we go. like this and we'll take this one and we'll chamfer it by did I say 40 centimeters so we'll chamfer it by 20 yeah so that should be 40 40 centimeters wide now I'll take this and we'll uh, weld it over here and we'll take this and we'll weld it over here We'll take this and we'll weld it over here, and we'll take this and we'll weld it over here. There we go. <clears throat> so that's 40 centimeters now. Then we'll also take this edge and we'll line it up with this so that 
so it's at 50 centimeters now and the height for the hatch should be probably like so it can fit a food tray but also something else maybe like 20 centimeters in case something bigger needs to go yeah I'll, I'll, I'll say 20 centimeters so we can actually let's hack that as well fuck it we'll go where the where the fence is the uh, shortest or lowest no wait never mind actually we'll do it like this uh, we'll go here and then we'll add 20 centimeters no wait a second well actually i think that is 20 centimeters just looked a bit weird but yeah so it's 20 by 40 at 50 centimeters right now and of course we forgot to do it on the outside so we need to do it manually Yes indeed, yes indeed. <clears throat> ah. mm. I think we can take this away now. How we want to make it is that uh, the hatch door is on this side of the door, the hinges are down here, so uh, the hatch door also acts, oh no, the hinges are down here, so the hatch door also acts as like, um, what you want to call it, like, like some kind of a... Uh, not, not table, but like, I don't know what you want to call. Anyways, we'll, we'll just do it then. We'll see how it is then. Take these and uh, we'll detach it. We'll take this and uh, the bridge and remove the edges. why this keeps generating these fucking smoothing groups everywhere automatically as if I'm asking it to be like no don't don't fucking do it
Okay, so now what we'll do is uh, we'll take this, of course, and we'll solidify it. Then uh, we'll uh, take the pivot and we'll move it down here and we'll move it all the way out there. Then we'll align this with the edge of this weight. There we go. Can't be like this, it needs to be at least slightly inside here, I think. Yeah, out here I think for minimum minimum problems to turn that just a bit like let's see that when it opens what I was aiming for is like that when it opens 90, 90 uh, degrees you can still put like uh, stuff on top of it you know like the food tray and shit like that so but say it's 90 we might want to add something like for convenience someone was marked with their design when they made it so made this so they thought of everything they like when you put the full tray over there you don't want it to you don't want it to like uh, Yeah. We're gonna do a 
edges out. I'll take these edges out. And, uh, and then we'll weld the vertices together. There we go. Should be now. Yeah. Bleeding borders over there. One more thing we need to check out though is that uh, now if I turn this over, will it intersect Wait a second. <laughs> Actually, I think it, it's like there's no intersection. It's perfectly aligned with that. How is that even possible? Well, I guess, I don't know. I have no fucking idea. Pure luck, I guess. I was to introduce chamfer over here. Yeah, the last perfect. What the fuck is this man? I'm not sure if I actually even want it to align so perfectly because, <coughs> yeah, I think we should. a bit so if that's the door see how how they line up almost perfectly that's crazy man okay i'll move it just a bit over here like let's put it over here and leave a little gap between should be okay It's 90 degrees, and, and there's like, yeah, now the food tray won't drop when you put it on. Why does this give me these fucking smoothing groups though? I don't want those. Do I have something like order smoothing or something selected over here? Because normally when, when you make something in 3ds Max, it definitely does not introduce smoothing groups automatically you need to give them yourself and i like that workflow because that's more controllable i hate the fact that i'm, I'm like subdividing stuff and it's like arbitrary you know giving me arbitrary uh, smoothing groups without asking for the permission so that's really annoying actually Anyways, 
have these. We also need to put like First of all, what we know for sure we need to do is uh, we'll chamfer this just a bit, say two millimeters. And same with all these other outer edges somewhere. Then for this uh, little door over here, we'll a uh, first of all we need to figure out how the mechanism should make it stop. Is it only that the hinge is like We'll make some placeholder hinges over here. We'll say there the radius is uh, oh, 75 and uh, the height should be like five, no, 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 more, seven centimeters. Yeah, that's good. Right. Only 12 sides. <coughs> then uh, yeah. uh, actually align it with the pivot. There we go. So now we have this over here, and uh, we'll put another one over there, and we'll. Uh, Center this on the X axis. There we go. So now for sure we have like the one part of the hinges exactly on the pivots. That's what we're aiming for. Next up, what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to something like this mm. okay we'll even give give them some bulk by we want it to, to be like, uh, look like it's actually on top of this door. So we'll do something like this. And we'll take these. And put it over here. Can. We can weld this 
is over here. There we go. And match the smoothing groups. What is it for this one? It's four. Alright. No way, actually. I'm not sure if we want to weld this like such. Maybe what we're gonna do is we'll. Uh, yeah, of course. We'll. We'll do like this. We'll bridge. Bridge. And uh, we'll cap. Actually, we won't even cap, we'll uh, weld, we'll save some. There we go. There we go, okay. The topology on these uh, hinges uh, it doesn't make a huge difference because... Because... Uh, yeah, it's just hinges. Okay, then um, um, let's see. out a bit, make it look smaller, there we go, wait, sub with these though, I mean, what the hell, didn't I just make all of these into number four smaller groups, the fuck man, it's almost as if, I don't know, Okay, uh, so now we need to give them the counter pieces, because this will be definitely attached here, so when we rotate this they will you know, be part of the doors like they should be. But then the counter pieces. I think I played it a bit dumb over here, but don't matter. Radius say 0.5, so it's smaller, and the height is seven to begin with. Then we'll make it bigger from there. Let's align it with the pivot. There we go. And uh, let's say the height is 10 centimeters. All right. It's perfectly centered. Then uh, we 
Let's do something like this. I have an idea. I think maybe. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. There we go, slice and uh, mm, okay, yeah. Five centimeters. Then we'll take this. We'll weld these back over here, so we'll make it triangular. should be like nah well maybe yeah okay I, I know what I'm gonna do we're gonna take these and we'll make these into like these cool For these, we will uh, I'm trying to see if uh, no, we'll leave them like that. We'll just uh. Soften these up by quite a bit. Say something like this. music but
There we go, now the door has like these stoppers. It looks mechanical. So it's good enough, I think. Now, we need to give some chamfers to this door as well. There's none at the moment. even take those we're gonna okay In two millimeters yeah all right and then we'll take these There we go, there we go. <clears throat> and like I said, there won't be a handle on the inside part of this door because obviously you don't want the prisoner to be able to hold hold the handle if someone tries to get in or anything of that sort. So there's that. Do we need to have on the inside? Nothing, I guess. Maybe some. Shape. Probably better to do it with normal maps, but I think I'll go and use geometry. So. Because geometry is always uh, more precise than normal mapping. And for details this size, I think I'll go with uh, geometry. centimeters to the top uh, uh, 
the slides. Then we'll take centimeters down from here. No slice. Then we'll put it up here. Ten centimeters from slice. And put it up here. And take away ten centimeters. There we go, then 90 degrees rotation, we'll take it to the mm, 10 centimeters. I think that's good. Slice. Then we'll go here and we'll add 10. Slice. So now we have this parts over here that we can bevel. How much? 1.5 centimeters of bevel and something like that looks pretty okay. Then we'll take these edges over here, these, no wait, only these, and see whether it's better that they're like rectangular or rounded rectangular. Oh, sorry, I feel like sneezing. Oh, fuck man. I think rectangular is actually better than rounded. What do you think? Think uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Rectangular is better than rounded rectangular because rounded makes it look softer and it's a fucking prison cell. It cannot look soft. It needs to look hard and like unforgiving. So definitely, no rounding over there. Maybe like yeah, fuck it. Let's do it like 0.2. So it's just it, it looks natural, but yeah. That's it. That's about it. All right. There we have the fucking cell door. On the outside, it needs a handle and stuff like that, but we're not gonna do it at least for now because it might never be visible to begin with. So. And this is obviously linked to this one, so basically when I rotate this it's okay, yeah, sure, but when I rotate this it moves along with it, actually this needs to be linked as well, there we go, there we go, and if we keep 
the rotation local, we can still do it all right. It's kind of <coughs> funny. I think this is a good example, actually, of of how how you kind of use smoke and mirrors in game game design. Because as you can see with the kitchen sink over here, it's pretty you know visually uh, bona fide. It looks as it should be. There's the fucking I don't know what's called in English, but it's like. How you look, uh, smell lock or something in, uh, as a direct translation. So it's down here, and then there's the pipe that leads to the floor drain drainage and stuff like that, like it should be in a in a sink. And there's also the the water pipes that lead to the sink. But as you may notice, this is actually one of those old school uh, uh, old school school type things where you just press the button and you get a little fountain of cold water that you can drink from so it's not for like washing hands or anything it's just for drinking uh, and obviously those are only going to dispense cold water because why would anyone want to drink hot water so why do we have two water pipes over here one for cold and one for hot water that's a good question but see, that's a thing that uh, no one thinks of unless you know how plumbing works. It just looks better. It looks better to have two pipes, the hot water and the cold water pipe coming to the sink, even though in reality it makes no sense to have both of them. Because people are used to seeing two pipes come up there. Even if they don't register the idea when they go to the toilet, they, they have seen two pipes go there. Rarely they have seen only one because this kind of things are pretty rare nowadays and they, they have always been pretty rare. The only place where I've seen them have been uh, like back in elementary school and stuff like that. So we'll just go with two pipes even though it's not realistic. It's not realistically accurate. It's believable anyways. Mm. Let's take a orthographic look from the top. Mm. This place still lacks the ceiling and uh, lots of minor stuff. Lots of minor stuff that needs to be added here. I'm just trying to figure out what to work with next. On, on this uh, room, but uh, probably put some little clutter over there, some books on the tables and uh, maybe a magazine, something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, something like that. And then we need to put some uh, air ventilation. This over here is actually, I'm gonna change the color. This is actually a light that's gonna be emanating a soft glow of uh, cold, bluish light, synthetic light on the room when it's dark outside. So you can never be in total fucking darkness. That's how prisons usually are. They, they never let you be in total darkness. So even during night, there's some kind of light light uh, projecting so they can uh, watch you and, and make sure that nothing shady is happening inside the room so uh, we're gonna have this light over here bar a light bar over here but we also need to make some air ventilation shafts here because even though it is a prison there needs to be at least some elementary level of ventilation there to you know Make sure the people don't actually suffocate. So, some air ventilation shafts, maybe like uh, uh, what are those called? Power. Uh, what are those called? Just a sec, I need to check it out. 
where you plug in, you know, uh, it's right on top of my tongue. Wall socket, yes, yes. You need, uh, need to make at least one socket over here, so for electrical devices, because this is obviously going to be a cell of someone who's uh, a long-term prisoner. It's a, it's a closed, uh, closed cell block, not like. Uh, like a county jail or something where you have like tens of people in the same so no, well not tens but but several people in the uh, same cell uh, sharing the space and you know fucking just sleeping in those small bunks having no personal property this is uh, for a long-term prisoner it may be even a death row prisoner who's been here for years and who's, who's had to make this place into his home so it looks like someone's small apartment even if, though it is a, it's a cold and damp fucking prison cell so they they do allow some uh, you know rudimentary fucking amenities to the people like maybe i don't know not not maybe tv but maybe like a small radio or something they can plug in or or fucking hair cutting device or whatever you you might need some electricity for so wall socket, air ventilation systems, mm. yeah, stuff like that. Some some minor things to liven up the walls and the, the ceiling and the floor, floor a bit, and uh, then some clutter clutter on the tables, maybe some clutter on the floor and in this cabin over here. Actually, this cabinet over here is uh, I've uh, it's not just. Uh, visual thing is actually a functional thing as well as you can see the doors open and, and it has empty space inside that you can actually use so it's the doors are modeled both way around with the locks of, uh, locks and everything so it's a fully functional cabinet we're gonna put something inside there as well also this toilet yeah it's it's functional as well uh, these toilet seats work like they should be. There's the plastic ring that you place on top of here when you take the second one and here's the lid. There we go. And uh, yeah, a little chair over here. Nothing special. Uh, some papers on the wall. Where did the other paper go? What the hell? Oh, it's just, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. Uh, some papers here, some pens, pencils, and uh, yeah. Here's the window you can peek through outside. Say, uh, let's make it like this. Looks more like a window. You can see the bars outside the window. Yeah, we have some wall tiles over here. Some wall tiles over here and on the floor as well. Uh, because this is the toilet area right next to the fucking bed. So here's the bed. Yeah, I'll try to make everything like, you know, if, if it happens, you see under the bed, it's also modeled. It's not just like empty mass over there. end table here's a small glass let's make it look more like glass even though it's not like text and we just there we go there's a small glass water glass actually now that I look at it wait a minute this more thing hasn't done me well um, Give me a second, I need to quickly fix something. Um. Got to subdivide the inside part of this glass when I smoothed it, so it looks pretty shitty. 
Actually, what I could do is uh, I'll just uh, I'll just redevelop the inside. Wait, what? Wait a second. We take this. We take the. Okay, never mind. Aha, I see. What the heck is this? Bird is over here. Aha, ha, they're clipping. No wonder. Well, I mean, we'll take this. All the polish. I'll just grow the selection from here. There we go. One more. Okay, we'll delete them. And we'll just make the inside part of this glass again a bit more optimized as well. I mean, it's just the inside part, it doesn't need to have so many subdivisions. Let's see, somewhere like here maybe. Yeah. Something like this, then we'll um, do like this and we'll take it down just a bit and then we'll cap it and uh, actually we won't cap it, we'll do this, take these and collapse them, there we go, and then we'll give it some smoothing groups as well. I think this should be like, this down here should be like, no smoothing groups, this could be, both of these could be, god damn it, both of these could be like, say, two, what is this, one, okay, okay, much better, much better, much better. Let's take one more quick look at this scene with some ambient lighting and by giving all of these a, a uniform coloring. So let's make all of them like gray. Add some ambient lighting over here with shadows. So here's what we have at the moment. This is a Actually, yeah, okay. This is from like a uh, fly on the ceiling type of perspective, bird's eye view. Another bird's eye view, right from the top. Not too shabby. Then we'll take a look on the. Actually, what we're gonna do is, I think, uh, I think for this little demonstration, we're gonna. Oh, not demonstration, but like test. We're gonna get rid of these outer walls, and then we'll disable the back face calling so we can actually 
a look at this. Then back face calling off. There we go. Cool. Now we can see inside this model. Okay, it's coming along nicely, not too bad, not too bad. Even if I say so myself. That's what. Uh, that's where we are at right now, and I think this is a good time to uh, call it quits and continue from here or wherever we are the next time we return. So thanks for joining me today and uh, have a nice Wednesday. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.